Um, how's everyone looking ahead of this one? Yeah, um, yeah, not too bad. Um, in terms of the other night, everyone's uh, pulled through that okay. Um, uh, Sayed uh, Haksabanovic probably will miss Monday as well. We had a scan, then it's nothing serious, but. Again, he's, he's a bit frustrated because he has been training, but not at 100%. So we're going to give him a chance to sort of get up and running. So hopefully just miss this game. Um, uh, Tony Ralston's still uh, still a bit sore. So, um, you know, he'll, he'll miss Monday as well. Um, and then Welsh and McCarthy are kind of the longer term ones. I think they're the only others that uh, won't be available. On Monday, we know that seasons are funny things, aren't they? They can change on, on games. Nine points is a good gap, a decent gap, but how important is it that come Monday you don't give Rangers any hope that they can claw that nine points back? I, we are not in charge of how Rangers feel. Um, our job is to, to kind of um, keep performing at the levels we have. Well, I think it's really, really irrelevant. I, I mean, I know people like to put sort of massive consequences, but, you know, if we win and do go 12 points ahead, what does that mean? Does that mean that we can just sort of clock off for the rest of the year and not worry about the game after or the game after that? Will our supporters sit down and say, you know what, maybe we can miss a few fixtures now because we're 12 points? I don't think so. That's not how it works. So for us, nothing changes. We, we, we've got to be at it on Monday. They have the same way we have been um, for every game this year and, and, and we'll continue to be at it after this game irrespective of the outcome. Um, like I said, how other how that affects other clubs is of no consequence to us. It's yeah, you know, we've been really good at just being focused at, at what's at hand, and what's at hand at the moment is a you know, cracking game on Monday against uh, you know a strong opponent in a fixture that's um, that's global, you know, that everyone watches, and um, you know that's uh, that's where our focus lies. Hi, Ange. Um, Alistair Johnson saying that um, he feels ready to to face Rangers in the, in the derby. Um, how likely is it that any of the three um, signings you've made ahead of the, the January transfer window will, will, will play against Rangers? Well, Tomoki's in Japan, so there's zero chance of him playing. Um, and with Alistair and, and, Yo and Kobayashi, um, they're available they're like everyone else. So, uh, you know, I'll make those decisions. And uh, you know, I've still got a couple of days of training, as I said. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we've got, you know, got two or three injuries, but uh, the rest of the squad's in, you know, Good condition and we've been playing well so it'll just depend on the uh, you know decisions i'll make but um <clears throat> we also have to wait just to make sure their international clearances come through because uh whilst they're registered with us then the, the clearance doesn't come through till after the first of january so um if their clearances come through then they're available and um you know they're um, they'll be in consideration um and th those three signings um ahead, ahead of the window is a light to be more um, incomings during the, the January transfer window? And if so, um, do you have any priorities about um, positions you want to strengthen? No, look, I think, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with, with kind of the three boys we brought in. And, um, yeah, that was probably our priority at this stage. Um, but, you know, transfer window hasn't even opened yet. So, um, you know, we, what we've got to obviously be aware of is that, um, you know, there may be departures as well. So... I guess the, <coughs> the pleasing thing from my perspective is, um, you know, we're in a good position now with the three incoming that, um, you know, whatever happens, we can make decisions that are, are best for the football club. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what January brings. Again, you know, my view on these things, if a good opportunity comes up for us that I think will make us stronger then uh, and, and it makes sense for us, then we'll move on it. But um, there's no great urgency now because, you know, the, the, the business have already done. Hi, hi, Ian. Hi, Angie. Um, I'm just going to ask Angie, you have a few of these fixtures now. That, do you, is there anything you've kind of learned as you go along with them? Is it maybe a different type of fixture that you, than other games perhaps? Do, do you, have you taken lessons from the, over the time? Has your approach changed at all? Um, no, not really. I mean, you kind of know going into it. It's, you know, it's, it's a massive fixture and you can't understand the significance between, be, you know, <coughs> behind every outcome but ultimately I think we've we've played in all these fixtures with the same sort of mindset that you know we, we've we've got to perform to our levels and um, you know play our football try and dominate the game in the areas we want to dominate and um, when we've done that we've been very effective both you know at Celtic Park and obviously at, at Ibrox last year in the second game but you know for the most part 
traditionally these kind of games tend to be tight. Now, you know, we've had a couple that haven't been uh, in our favour, but you, know, you don't go into these games thinking they're going to be sort of open, you know, sort of open affairs. It's, it's going to be tight. You know, both teams are going to be at it, and um, and it's exciting and, and one you're, you're looking forward to. Does the, the change of manager at Ibrooks have any impact on how you approach the game, prepare for the game, or will that be, maybe be something that maybe happens during a game if you have to change something at all? No, no, it, it does change because, as, as I've always said, you know, we, we treat every opponent you know, the same way, and that is that you know, we, we kind of look at um, you know, what they're doing currently rather than sort of historical stuff. And um, you know, They've had a change of manager, which has meant you know, Michael's come in, he's, he's Change the shape slightly in terms of the way they want to play. He's he's tried different personnel, um, so you know all those kind of things are factored into it. And you know we we try and prepare our players you know for every possible outcome. But as you say, sometimes during games things you know, change or look different uh, depending on how the game's going. Um, I think for us um, at the moment, you know one of our strengths is the ability to to be to adapt mid-game, whether that's through. You know, just the way we play, or you know, by making substitutions with players coming in who who, who have different kind of qualities. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of both. But you know, our preparations are always the same, irrespective of the opponent. It's about you know what we think they're likely to bring against us. You know, um, in the current circumstances. Morning, Ange. How's uh, Josip Juranovic looking in terms of fitness? And has there been any update on our potential transfer away from the club for for him? Yossip's fine. Yeah, I mean he he's, he trained. He was on the bench, and yeah, he's fine. And no, there's nothing uh, about him. And since becoming Celtic manager, I don't think you've experienced a, a game at Ibrox with the the old allocation. There's still only 700 Celtic fans going to be at Ibrox. Is that something you'd like to see change in the future? Look, I, I've I've said in the past that um, you know it's uh, with all the, the the great derbies around the world, um, yeah. Part of the sort of um, attraction to them is the colour they bring, and, and there's, I think there's always better sort of colour and atmosphere when you've got you know more of the away support there. But you know, I certainly heard our 700 last year, and hopefully we'll hear them this year as well. Hi, hi, Ange. Um, is previous experience in this fixture a factor for you when it comes to picking the team? No, uh, again, you know, I think. It's if you fall into that trap, I think you you kind of you miss what's in front of you. You know, my my decisions around make you know picking a team are what what's happening you know currently. It's it's even the last game just becomes a reference point because things change. I mean, the other day, you know, we had Jota fall ill the day before the game, couldn't train. So even though he was in my plan, so if I sit here and you know try and um, think about today what the team's going to be for for Monday, then. Um, you know, I'm likely to, to miss some key information coming in. I always make these decisions, um, you know, having all the information I can to do that. And it means that you take in training, you take in how the players are, are feeling, how, they, how they're looking at training. You take into account the opponent, you know, the circumstances. It's everything. It's about, you know, like I said, I, my, you know, when people sort of um, try and guess my team selections or, you know, pass judgment on it, they're usually doing it with probably around 40% of the information I have. And I'm sure if they had 100% of the information, they may still think I got it wrong. But, um, you know, at the same time, I think they'll understand why I've made my decisions. Yeah. How much confidence do you take from the last trip to iBooks where the team stuck to their principles despite going behind so early on in that environment? Yeah, look, again, to a certain extent, but we've changed so much since then and, and they've changed, obviously, but <coughs> I take confidence from what we're doing now. You know, that's what gives me confidence that and belief is that, you know, whatever challenges we've had so far this year, you know, apart from the St Mirren game, we've we've overcome domestically. And um, that's where, you, you know, not just me, I guess the players, everyone gets their belief from. Um <coughs> What happened last year is um, is in our trophy cabinet. That's it, and that's where it's locked away. It's not relevant now. It's not relevant. I mean, I don't, I, re I won't, you know, I, I don't use last year as a reference point for anything. Um, when we talk to the team this year, um, you know, we talk about our growth this year. You know, how, how we started the season and how we want to finish it, and that's that's always going to be, you know, where how we compare ourselves, how we're going, and and you know how we evaluate ourselves because. If I start talking about last year, um, then you know people can rightly talk about the year before or the year before that, and 
it, it, you end up down a tunnel that, you know, really, to me, has no relevance to this current group of players, this current environment. Um, like I said, we're, we're a different team to the first game of the year, let alone last year. So, you know, those kind of things uh, are less important than, than what's happening right now.